can see. Hi, hello. Put you on spotlights. Okay. So for everybody else, can you guys turn off your cameras and also your microphone? And we're going to coach these two people through step by step. And we're going to get into a demonstration because what I'm going to be teaching you guys needs to be caught, not taught. If we just go through it like this is step one, these are the words you say, it won't make sense in the context of what we're doing. Okay. So being the very first demo, I'm going to put a lot of pressure on you guys not to perform, but just to go through the instructions. And this is the place where I want to start. All I want to do, Keld, is let's investigate Shabnan's problem. That's it. We're not going to resolve it. We're not mm -hmm. going to get to the root cause. We probably will anyway. Um, we're not going to close it. We're not going to do therapy. We're not going to do testing. We're not going to do demarcation. We'll do that step by step. All I want to do, guys, is give everybody that's here that's new to not seeing this before is... I've talked about conversation hypnosis a lot. I want everybody to get an example of this. Then we can tease out the common principles and use those as learning lessons. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So Kel, are you up for that? Absolutely. Okay. So Shabnam, um, I'll let Kel take over. So Kel, all I want you to do, ask Shabnam what her problem is. And what I'll probably do every now and then, I'll interrupt you and I'll say, Kel, what did she say? What do we think? You've probably seen the demos of me doing that before. We'll go through that whole step-by-step -step formula and see where this goes. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Let's take this away. Cool. Cool. I'm excited about it. Um, I think last time I saw you do a demo was like five years ago. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so bear with me. Now you're in the hot seat. Uh, um, <laughs> great to meet you, Snap, Shevin. I don't think we've met before. We so, haven't. Hi, Keld. No, good to see you. So how can I help you? What's your problem today? Um, I've kind of developed a real phobia around driving. Um, I've been driving okay. for all my entire life, but over the last few years, I've become, I, I get panic attacks, um, really severe panic attacks when I'm driving. So I just avoid driving. I haven't driven in over a year now. You haven't driven in over a year now? Yeah. And that's because you get panic attacks. Um, yeah, all of a sudden it happened once, um, and since then the fear of that happening again has just got me to a stage where I can't even think about driving. And it, I have, have had I've had some hypnosis for it before, and I've had some other people try to help me, and it seems that it's okay for a little bit, but it's just becomes really frightening and I've just avoided driving now for the past year or so. So it keeps popping back in and 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 it just keeps being frightening no matter what you do. Is that is, yeah. that's the sensation you have? Okay. Yeah, so it's not when I'm driving generally where I know um, the roads where it's flat, mainly when it's on the motorway and it's really fast and lots of cars and especially if I go over anything that is high. Um, if it's a high motorway or a bridge, um, that's the first time it ever happened to me. Suddenly, all of a sudden, I've never experienced it before, but I had physical sensations of panic attack. Um, I literally mm. thought I was going to die. Um, and yeah. that's, that was really frightening. So do you know anything about what costs these panic attacks to come? Um, no, the first time it ever happened, it came out the blue. I, I've driven over really high motorways before, never had a problem. Um, just that once it happened, um, I noticed that I was really high up and I was on the motorway, lots of cars. Um, and I got really scared just talking about it, start, starting to make my hands get all kind of cold and clammy as well. Um, and it just got really frightening to the point that I didn't feel safe driving. Um, and I'd just get the train, three trains if I had to avoid <laughs> driving, um, I just wouldn't drive. So I haven't, and, it, and it's obviously a problem because I can't go places I'd like to go easily. No, you can't go places you'd like to go. We'll, we'll pause right there. Great job so far. So this is pretty typical, and this is a great way to open the therapy session, um, is we've asked a client what their problem is and Shabnam, please take this the right way and everyone pay attention. Yeah, say. What I'm about to say will be worth the money that you have spent and the time you're putting into this course. And it's this statement. 
everything Shabnam has said right now is complete garbage, <laughs> absolute rubbish. And I'll back this up with some true with some truisms as well. Shabna's given us an example of what her problem is, her best guess of what's happening unconscious. We all know, I don't have to explain it, that all of our problems exist unconscious and there's some connection to consciousness. It gets locked off, all that cool stuff, which we'll talk about as we go through this course. But basically all Shabnam's given us is her best representation of what the problem is. And here's the place where we can find ourselves in very hot water. Let's say I was doing a strategy call with Shabnam. She told me this and she booked in for this phobia, this driving phobia. I would now get everything prepared for this driving phobia, get everything set up, ready to go without realizing like, shit, that's actually not what I'm going to be solving because this isn't the root cause. This isn't the real problem. All we found out right now are facts. So I can pretty much guesstimate the reason why Shabna's problem has been resolved in the past is because the therapist, maybe unbeknownst to them, has been fixing this symptom right here. They've been fixing the facts, the consciousness, the conscious fluff that's come out. We don't know what to actually fix until we find out what it is. So if there's one thing you could take away from this is this. Whenever we ask a client what their problem is, without the presence of unconscious moments, which I'll explain very soon where they are, they'll probably come up very, very soon. Anyone, I'll point them out. We need to ignore basically all of what Shabnam said right now and do a deeper investigation to find out what's really going on. What's the real thing happening there? So if you could take this away, and this is what I mean about not being able to prepare for any of this stuff. How can you prepare for any of this stuff when we don't even know what it is? Shabnam doesn't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Kel doesn't know what it is. But we could have spent a couple of hours preparing for what this is, which is basically just a guess. Does that make sense for you too? Hopefully that makes sense for everybody else as well. Yeah. Um, so Kel, let me ask you this. What are you curious yes. about? Based on what Shabnam said, what are you curious about? I'm curious to to find out what is. You know, I've done a little bit of this, but never. You know, I only saw your free content. That's right. That, that's what we're going to go <laughs> um, through step by step. You're going um, to hear me ask. I, you I that learned a lot. so much from that, but but you know, it it makes me curious of what is it that that tickles you wrong somewhere that that has caused this. Um, Having having the understanding already that 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 usually you know actually that, that the symptom is never really what we worked with what we work with so there is something else and what what is that you know so so my thought first was you know try to discover a little of uh, do you know if anything caused this is there anything we can draw some parallels to other things that maybe has happened in your past. That's right. And, and your question and, was actually good. The question you asked, which was, uh, I think, do you know what causes? this? That's a great question. Okay. Because it mm -hmm. had her thinking just slightly for some information. So you're actually on the right track. But I want you to keep this spirit of curiosity as we go through. And this is for everybody. As we go through these two days, I want you guys to get so goddamn curious about what the real problem is without ever trying to resolve it. Remember, take the pressure off. So instead mm -hmm. of sitting there going, oh my God, how the hell am I going to solve a driving phobia? What the hell am I going to do? You're in the wrong headspace. Take a step back and listen to Shabnam talk. And then we're going to figure out what's the information we're going to hold on to and what's the information we're going to ignore. Okay. So I've interrupted the session. Um, we'll pick it up again. Um, Kel, you're on the right track. So let's just ask any old questions, see what happens. And then we'll formulate some good questions we can ask a little bit later. But uh, can I take it away? Let's see if we can pick this up again. So, Shavnan, um, you told me that that you don't really know where this thing comes from, and I'm I'm wondering if when you when you when we talk about how you experience when you drive over the high bridges, the high places, and you get the anxiety. How does that make you think? How does that make you feel when you think of that? That experience? Really, when you're up 
really scared, um, I, like not being in control. I, I literally didn't feel I had control over my body. Um, just really, really scared. Never happened before. So it came out the blue. And I've driven over high motorways before. So when that happened the first time, um, I felt literally felt like I could either crash the car or go over the side. Um, I felt out of control. Uh, my body just was out of control. Um, scared. So, so what what you really felt was being out of control. How does how to be curious about that feeling of being out of control? How how does that feel? Just um, in 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 the driving situation, really scary. Um, really scary in the driving situation. Yeah. Is there are there other places in your life where you feel like maybe you're out of control? Um, maybe, yeah. So maybe it's more than just driving. Maybe it's something entirely different. Not that question. I will pause right there. It's a good question. Right. But now, what we've actually done, and this is what this is how these two days are going to go, guys. Is we have to catch this stuff, and I've got to put a learning lesson to what. Nothing wrong with the question, but we've got to hear the syntax of that question. What we could have done right there, and hopefully it hasn't, we basically just said to Shabna, hey, go look for other places that are like this and connect all those bad things as well. And before long, she walks out of the office going, fuck, held my whole life's out of control. You fucked me over. What have you done? I want my money back. Okay. I, I get more sessions. Yeah, more, <laughs> more sessions. So what I want to do is to take a step back. She's actually presented something and it was very, 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 very quick. And by the end of the day, two, uh, two, uh, the end of the two days, guys, you'll see what I'm seeing. Okay. But it's interesting that, and it might be nothing. It might be, uh, it could be anything at this point is Shabnam has said it, and I have to sort of paraphrase it hasn't happened before, but it just showed up out of the blue. I'm curious about that. Does that make mm -hmm. you curious as well? So, Kel, how would we ask that question? To see where it's That's takes a good us. question. Um, I, I would say um, you're telling me that this just happened out of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It never ever happened before. Never happened. I've no, I've, I've I've been driving all my life. I've driven over really high motorways many times before, um, but that particular time when it happened was the first time I ever got scared. So, what's the obvious question to ask right now, Kel? No, I'm a bit lost there. I have to say. Help, help my brother out here. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll take her for a little bit, but you're doing a good job. There's nothing wrong with where we are. No, I so, just blank. <laughs> so what happened? If it never happened before, then all of a sudden it did. What was happening? Of course. So what was happening? What happened? Uh, I was just driving like I normally would be. Um, nothing, nothing unusual happened apart from me looking to the side and noticing how high I was. And that instantly made me really scared. Um, and then I started having all the physical re reactions where um, my heart was pounding, my legs felt like jelly. I was gripping the steering wheel. And I was just petrified and I slowed the car right down, even though I was in the right lane, which is supposedly the fast lane. Mm -hmm. um, and there were lots of cars behind me, uh, clearly a very dangerous situation, but I, I didn't know what else to do. I was really scared and I, I, I was, I, d I had no control. I <clears throat> literally was worried that I was going to let go of the steering wheel or something. So I was gripping onto it really tight and, I, and that just happened all of a sudden. 
Sure, but you've driven over those high places before, right? Same bridge, you've driven over that before? Not that one, no. That was a new one. That was the first time I went over that one. Right, so what was different about that bridge than the other ones? Um, I saw trees. <laughs> I saw trees, trees? Um, yeah, below. Uh, and I noticed how high I was and then that there was another motor, the other motorway going the other direction was below me. And that was a lot higher. Um, I just realized how high I was. I think that's what was really scary all of a sudden. So this was, I hadn't been over this motorway before. Um, it's the first time I ever took this route, first time I ever went in this direction on my own. Um, but previous to that, I've been over really high motorways where there's buildings and... Um, so what was different? Uh, uh, what was different? I've just there we never have been it. down there. Did everyone see what happened there? And it happened very quick. And you're going to hear me use this word a lot, unconscious moments. Basically what Shabna, I've asked her is she sort of evaded the question for a little bit, which is fine. It's more consciousness. But I'm basically asking her, hey, you've done the bridge thing. That's of a reasonable height. Then there's this one. And you said this was higher. But then you contradicted yourself and said, hey, I've been on higher bridges other than this one too. So that sort of contradicts that idea. And I basically said, well, what was different this time? And you guys will have to watch the video and I'll break this down afterwards, of course, but there was a blankness on her face. So what Shabnam's has to do at that point is I'm basically asking her to retrieve unconscious information for me. Because the problem's unconscious, I'm asking her to describe her unconscious problem. In order for her to do that, she has to actually go into trance to retrieve that information and bring it out for me. So the very nature of actually asking our client about the problem, they're actually going to start to go into trance. So we're killing two birds with one stone. But I don't know what to fix unless I do this. So it's a win-win for everybody. But even now, I'm still not sure what the problem is. The phobia, the heights, that's just that's more of like a backwards rational rationalization. She sort of labeled that as a phobia. It's getting close. I've got an assumption I know what's going on, but I don't want to feed her that in case I'm wrong. I'd have to test that out. But all I want to point out so far in this exercise, all we're doing is just finding out information about the problem and we caught it on something. I don't know what that something was, but I can clearly see it in her face, the amount of blinking she's doing as well. She's gone somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So the very fact of talking about the problem actually starts the trance. Okay, and this is what I mean about getting past resistance. When you do the job you're supposed to do, which is actually find out what the real problem is, you're going to elicit a trance at the same time. Okay, so I asked you before, Shabnam, what was different about this bridge? It was new. <clears throat> I hadn't been over this one before. Mm-hmm. So um, the other ones, when you went over those, they were new as well, right? You had to have gone over them the first time to make them new. Yeah, yeah. So what was so new about this one? Um. <laughs> and then we have her again. <laughs> and I'm just asking um. curious questions. But we're going somewhere. I've got, to, I've got to stop. I've got to stop myself from interrupting. So I'm curious to see where this goes. What's happening? It's okay. Right now? You're doing great. <laughs> What's happening right now, Shabnam? Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I was just laughing because of what you said, and now I can't remember what that was. <laughs> so, Cal, based you're doing a good job. Cal, based on what she's just told us there, where is she right now? She's Tranting hard, I'd say. And we haven't even started yet. Where's yes. the eye closure? Where's the suggestibility test? All I've done is ask obvious questions and look at her. And this is resolving. This is what this laughter is. That's the unconscious expression. That's the energy attached to this starting to come out. And I can see she's trancing off. I'm not even talking to her. I'm talking to Kel and she's still processing mm -hmm. something. So what's happening right now, Shabnam, as you think about the problem? 
I'm not sure why I'm finding it funny. It's um, Yeah, it's supposed to be a serious problem. What the hell are you laughing at? It is serious. I can't go anywhere because... Um, what are you laughing for? <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> it's not funny at all. Um, Could afford me. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I can't remember your question. So what was so new about this bridge? Or new enough to make you laugh about it? Um... The bridge wasn't funny. Um, but it was new enough to make you laugh now. I'm not sure why I laughed. It wasn't the bridge. So um, was just that I've, I've watched the videos before and I didn't expect that. <laughs> you didn't it expect work. it. Just like you didn't expect that bridge, right? No, that's it. It was... I didn't realise it even was a bridge till, till I looked down. Right. Unexpected. Unexpected, yeah. There you go. Unexpected. So what's happening right now? Yeah, it, it was, it, it, it shocked me because I didn't realise it, right. it, it had become a bridge. It was um, all of a sudden I was really high and I, right. I hadn't noticed. You hadn't noticed, but there you were. Yeah. So what's happening now as you think about it? I, um, I can picture it. Um, right. And when you do that, what happens? There you go. Um, what just happened there? Not, not really sure. I'm picturing it, but I don't see. I, 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 I can't, I can't quite understand why I would would have been scared all of a sudden. Well, think about it, because there you were. Hmm. You can't quite understand, but then you did. Enough to laugh about it, that is. Yeah. Yes, indeed. It, How do you it, feel? it doesn't make sense though. Yeah. Right. So when did that happen? Or did that catch you unaware as well? Yeah, because I've never been scared of driving. Right. So why was I all of a sudden scared? What a good looking question. You may as well think about it properly, that is. With all those years of experience driving. Hmm. There you go. Getting closer. So close. So close. So what's happening now? I'm just thinking about the question. Um, right. So how do you feel about driving right now? I'd love to get my car again because I actually sold it. <laughs> what, sorry? Well, I'd have to get a car again because I sold it because I wasn't driving anymore. Um, but it doesn't seem like such a big deal. Um, 
So if it's not a big deal, what is it? It's like a problem, a problem that I've created, isn't it? Um, because there's absolutely no reason to be scared. I know how to drive. You do know how to drive. Yeah. So I wonder what you did different that day. I, I think I know. <laughs> um, what is it? I'm, I'm thinking, but I don't, at the same time, thinking, well, what's that got to do with driving? Um, so what were you thinking? That was the first time that I'd driven alone to a completely different place so far away, which I'd never done before. Right. So I wonder what that has to do with it. So good question. Um, don't know. Seems really dumb. I know. And I, <clears throat> I'm not really sure. That's the only thing I can think of. That it was um, doing something really different. That I hadn't done right. before. Doing something different. Yeah. Alone this time. Yeah, I had my son and my dog with us, with me. But as in it was me, I was responsible on my own. Right. Yeah. It's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> what's happening right now it don't just seems just don't silly. tell me it's funny again it's not but it is silly because um, you said a lot of responsibility but it's not a new responsibility he's been my son right. all the time so yeah So you're telling me it was just something new? Yeah. It, yeah, I hadn't done that before. How many times have you done new things in your life? <laughs> Lots. So what was different about this? What's that? Um, I'm just thinking it's just the just the going away, making all the decisions by myself, probably. Right. That was different, yeah. Right. How do you feel about it now? Still don't understand what it's got to do with the driving. Because <laughs> my mind's just going back to thinking, trying to put it all together, like when I was driving to work or when I was driving to other places I've been to, why would that be an issue then? Because that's something I always do anyway. That's right. So why'd you bring it up as a problem? Because I got scared of driving, so it became a problem. Right. And what's happening with it now? I can't see why it's a problem. And how do you feel about that? I'm hoping it's gone so that I can drive because I do want to drive down to somewhere where I know it's going to be. Whenever you go to the coast, there's always high 
roads and cliffs that you have to drive past and I want to go down and see my son. So, All right. Good reason to drive. It is. And I, that's the reason why I haven't got it because of the driving. Yeah. So you understand there's going to be a bit of testing on your side. Yeah. I won't let you borrow my car to do it, but <laughs> how do you feel about the whole thing right now? I'm not sure. I don't think I'll know until I actually yeah. get in a car and drive. I agree. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Sure. I don't know why I'm still finding this funny, <laughs> but no. <laughs> no questions. It'll take some time. Okay. Keld, any questions? I think it, it was, you know, I was really happy to see that, um, yeah, done, that you brought up the, um, I guess I'll have to see when I drive statement because I always feel concerned that, that when a client says that, you know, I feel like I've resolved things, but I hate that I can't test there. Yeah. Because so, we need to go sit in a car. Yeah. Well, that, that's one. And I want to bring this up as a learning lesson. This is an interesting subject that comes up. And this is something we can't test on the spot, not like smoking or something like that. But I'm going to take your spotlight now, Shabna. I'm going to break all that down. I'll explain what happened. I'll explain what happened to everybody uh, with this to everybody, I should say. Okay. So let me put this back onto normal view. Okay, guys, bring your cameras back on. Let's discuss what that was. Okay. So interesting way to start the actual whole training program. So we'll talk about what happened at the end there. This is one of those things uh, in day two when we formally look at testing. This is one of those things that we can't test on the spot. So we have to leave it a bit open-ended. We'd have to find out what happens when she drives and stuff like that. It's unlike testing with smoking, where you can do some scenario testing, emotional testing, which I promise we'll get into day two. But uh, isn't, let, isn't it the same with relationships? Uh, yeah, relationships will be the same. Yeah. We'll get more into those different yeah. difference and sames as well. But let's yeah. break this down yeah. mechanically. Who's ever seen something like that before? Something similar? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll answer questions first, then I'll break this down very, very mechanically. The reason I like to start off with a demo is so you can see it, appreciate it. And then the more of those things we do, the more mechanical we can get. I'll tell you why we ask this question instead of that question, why we do this, why we do that. But as a very big overview, where there wasn't really the trance that probably everybody was looking for, like the eye closure, the drooling, you know, sitting there, hand levitation. And that's the first le learning lesson I want to bring out. Everybody does trance differently. So if you go into a session with the understanding that my client's eyes have to be closed, you are now telling your client what to do. And you do not want to do that. If your client decides to close their eyes through the session, you're going to make it seem like that's what you wanted them to do without actually saying. And we sort of, we almost went there and you'll be able to see that in the tape and I'll bring up what I said at that point. But who would say that's like a totally different trance and they're what they're pretty much used to, like with the eye closure and stuff like that. It looks pretty different, right? But we got to, we got to enough resolution today, even though that's not where we're going. There's probably some more things we could have done without was really just opening this thing up without the testing and stuff like that. But I'll break down the mechanics of what you just saw, uh, but I'll answer these questions.